and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the ever-growing, always-expanding, award-winning fan show. Yes, thank you, 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 and thank you, NFL, for coming back with a vengeance. If NFL seasons were titled like action movies, I feel like this one, uh, just week one, would have been NFL 2018, back with a vengeance. Now, there's been a lot of criticism and a lot of stuff going on around the NFL, outside the NFL, or just before the actual kickoff. And so we had kickoff, but people, of course, are on Kaepernick watch, and who's going to kneel during the anthem? I don't care. Football is back. Like, look, you have the right to protest, and then you have the right to protest protests and boycott whatever it is that you want to boycott. Meanwhile, I'm still going to enjoy the finer things in life, which is NFL football. I don't care if it's damn near about to be flag football. It isn't yet, and it's still just as entertaining. Week one was no exception. Week one was everything that you wanted from week one of the NFL, and then some. We have so much to go over with headlines. We're going to dive right in. And after that, I will welcome the lovely and talented Erin Coscarelli, straight from NFL Network. She's on assignment right now, but decided to uh, box out a little bit of time for us here at the Fan Show. She's part of the Fan Nation Fantasy Football League, and we will address her week one. Did she win or did she lose? If you follow the Fan Show on social media, you already know the answer to this. But we'll see. We'll get her reaction to her week one contest. It was the Battle of L.A., Aaron Coscarelli from NFL Network versus Chris Cope, the comedian from the Los Angeles area, who would take the title of King of L.A., at least this round. They may have a matchup later on. We'll have to check the schedule, and then, of course, the postseason. Who knows what could happen then? But without further ado or any more delay, here are tonight's headlines. And the headlines, of course, brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. You can customize your world. Hit up Ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com. And if you can dream it, he can do it. He can put your logo or artwork on it. Just submitted an order for a batch of hats. The first ever fan show hats going to be made at Dynamite Enterprises, and I gotta tell you, I am very excited about this. We went through the whole process again. He had so many different choice of hats. I had a few recommendations from people of Fan Nation. I said, what What do you have from this brand, this company? He said, I have this, this, and this one. Which is your most popular? This one. Let's do a dozen of those, and then, all right, let's go and pick out the thread. Let's make sure we have the right colors for you. We want you to be happy. We want you to be proud of this product. So we went and handpicked the thread, and he's going to make those. Another batch of T-shirts are on the way. So Fan Nation, fear not. We are going to help you get that Fan Show merch in your hands and on your head as soon as possible, courtesy Dynamite Enterprise. Don't take my word for it. Go and get something ordered for yourself. T-shirts, hats onesies socks underwear foam fingers trophies banners table runners tablecloths hoodies zip up jackets hats i'm pretty sure i already said that bandanas seriously if you can think it he can do it he will find a place that makes the stuff and put your logo and artwork on it so ethan at dynamite enterprises visit dynamiteenterprises.com today and tell him the fan show sent you and he is going to hook you up so NFL week one is officially in the books and not not too soon not too late Uh, just wow it when when you have opening week of the NFL you really have to prepare yourself almost be like this is going to be an overwhelming weekend you have the kickoff Thursday night right which we had Atlanta Philadelphia and then you have your doubleheader Monday night, okay, so there's three games, then you have your Sunday night debut, right, the primetime game on Sunday night, so there's four games out of 16 
You still have 12 games to watch opening weekend on Sunday. I mean, that is ridiculous. And up until week four, that's how many you can expect to see each and every weekend. Because then the bye weeks start. And then you lose a matchup here or there. uh, And then you lose a few more and a few more. And then you're past the bye week. And then it's full charge into the postseason. So I would pace yourselves. Because if week one is in the indication, we are in for a wild ride in 2018. I'm sure it sounds like we say that every year here when it comes to the NFL and the fan show. But let me just take you through these headlines so that you believe me when I say that this was crazy. First and foremost... The Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles have picked up right where they left off in 2017. Both teams. And what I mean by that is Philadelphia won and Atlanta lost. And Atlanta lost in nearly identical fashion as they did last year during their postseason run against who? The Philadelphia Eagles. It was a shot to the back or to the side of the end zone, not back corner to Julio Jones. Matt Ryan overthrows him just by a hair game over. And they got stopped in that red zone to start the game and to end the game. I mean, this Philadelphia offense, say what you will about Nick Foles or whatever else, but that defense is not to be messed with. And they proved that. So Philly, Pick up right where they left off, winning the Super Bowl. They were the last team in the NFL to win a game, and they were the first team of the season to win a game. Final score, 18-12 to out of Philadelphia. Philly, frickin' Philly, has got a lot to look forward to the rest of the season. Then comes your Sunday slate, and let's run them down. The Browns ended their losing streak, and they didn't even have to win. (laughs) Only the Browns, only the Cleveland Browns could end a losing streak without winning. They tied the Pittsburgh Steelers 21 all is your final from Cleveland. A missed field goal within chip shot distance. Sign Craig the leg, hashtag. And the Browns within spitting distance of having their first win. First win of the last calendar year. Would have been the first win of their season. Things would have been sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns in Cleveland. They couldn't get the job done. In overtime, 21-21, your final in Cleveland. They will have to hope to get a win a little later. But at least, hey, I didn't lose. And that is so Cleveland. Next up, we have Sam Darnold's uh, Monday night game last night. Takes all the credit for the Jets' dominant win over the Detroit Lions. 48-17. In Detroit, yeah, you heard it right, 4-8-1-7. He accounted for 14 of the New York Jets points and 7 of Detroit's. That's right, his first play of the game of his NFL career, the official, official, officially, official start of his career. Not preseason, not training camp, no, this one counts towards everything. Was a pick six taken to the house, things looked great for Detroit and that was about as good as they were going to look for Detroit. 48-17, Darnold would throw two touchdown passes, but the rest was all defense, special teams, and the run game. So you guys can go ahead and just let loose the grip on Darnold's balls a little bit, if you could, please, for those of you that said he was going to be the next Peyton Manning or whatever great quarterback you compared him to, because he's he's got a ways to go. Uh, Gruden had not so happy homecoming last night in Oakland. Things started out great. Gruden offense looked like it was firing on all cylinders, but then they would get shut out in the second half. They lost to the Rams in what will probably be the last battle of California be these two teams because they are moving to Vegas next year. 33-13 is your final as LA rallies. Cooper Cup even had himself a touchdown. Shout out to the EWU alum. Go Eags. Fitz Magic is back, at least for now. We all know how this story goes. Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Harvard grad, the Ivy League quarterback, has a fantastic game. And we're just like, why isn't this guy a starter somewhere? Why isn't he a franchise quarterback? And then the next game happens and you're like, oh, yeah, that's why. So apparently the Saints forgot how to defense. And Fitzpatrick says, hey, Drew, I bet I can outscore you today. And Drew was just like, hey, yeah, we'll see. We did. 48-40 is your final from New Orleans in favor of the Buccaneers, led by Ryan Fitzmagic. 
Jimmy G's win streak ends in Minnesota. I hate to say it. I called this one, but, you know, it is what it is. We all have to lose sometime. I knew it was going to be a tall order for him to try to tie Big Ben's rookie winning streak of, what, like 12 or 13 games? He needed to win seven more. It wasn't going to happen. But I'm okay with them losing their season opener if that means that they have a promising remainder of the season because in previous cases and scenarios for the 49ers they've won their opener in very convincing fashion and had a dismal season following that so if they if the ends justify the means you sacrifice the few for the many i am okay with that now to be entirely honest i think that 49ers could beat minnesota on their best day and we are talking about one of the nfl's best defense why because there were so many missed opportunities literally there were dropped passes and missed balls that could have easily been touchdowns or game changers for San Francisco, and Minnesota simply capitalized on them. They played mistake-free football. Kirk Cousins had himself a day in his debut as a Minnesota Viking. But for Alfred Morris to fumble the ball on the one-yard line after an 11-minute drive, come on, man, I'm going to throw stuff at you in my TV. It's just it's things like that. And then you have a wide-open George Kittle, could have taken it to the house, Drops the ball. He could have dove for it and had a huge chunk of field made up for, but no, he missed. Jimmy G uncharacteristically threw a couple of interceptions. One not his fault, the other very much his fault. So that is how the 49ers will begin their 2018 campaign. But it's all right. It's best to get it out of the way now than later. The Patriots are doing Patriot things in their opener as they beat the Houston Texans 27-20. to Deshaun Watson not having quite the... Uh, come back and welcome that he was hoping for but maybe when they're actually in houston it'll be a different story chiefs shock the chargers pun intended they had themselves quite the day with new quarterback patrick mahomes that's right the era of mahomes starts in kansas city well in la technically 38 20 it's your final for the chiefs over the Chargers. Uh, we have Martavis Bryant closing in on a one-year deal with the Oakland Raiders. Des Bryant, though, watching from his couch, laughing hysterically at the Cowboys and their just poor efforts to try to do anything, make anything happen against the. Uh, God, who was it that like this game was just so? I don't even care that I completely forgot. Oh, the Carolina Panthers, sixteen to eight. They were missing both Des Bryant and. Dan Bailey. Speaking of the Panthers, Greg Olson to miss a significant amount of time because he re-injured his freaking foot. The one that he fractured last year? Yeah, he re-injured it. Way to go. Uh, and let's see here. The Patriots sign wide receiver Corey Coleman, so they're getting some help on the offense. Not that they freaking need it. And finally, let's have it. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> earns every damn penny of that $100 million contract. Sunday night football the greatest rivalry in NFL, the grandest stage of them all in NFL, short of the Super Bowl, Sunday night football, prime time. Chicago had a 20 to nothing lead over the Green Bay Packers at halftime. And the final score, 24-23, Green Bay. That's right, you heard me right. Aaron Rodgers on one leg. He was sidelined before halftime. He was doubtful. They had to drive him in on one of their little injury golf carts at Lambeau, and he comes hobbling out of the tunnel. Not today! I am going to show you why I'm worth every penny. And boy, did he ever. Only the Chicago Bears could get manhandled by one man so convincingly in a single quarter of play. And that was the fourth quarter, 24-23. They had their chances, but hey, the Bears are going to bear. All right, and the Browns are going to brown, and that's what you can count on. Set your watch to it here in the NFL. So that will do it for headlines, and we're going to jump right into bringing on my special guest, Ms. Erin Coscarelli. So don't go anywhere. We've got more of the Fan Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the league? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am. 
but the one percent do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons. Like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy. Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like, Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and you can hear her just fine this time because she's on the phone, not via Skype, but it is the lovely and talented first lady of NFL Network, Erin Coscarelli. How you doing? I'm good. I took an L this week in our fantasy draft, so I could be better, but, uh, you know, other other than that, um, I could be feeling worse. I could be feeling like the Bears. You know, uh, entire fan base. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny because I actually brought up the the fantasy league in the the start of the show, and I said we might talk about that, we might not, and you just come firing right out the gate. You're like, I took an L. I'm okay with that. Like, I can I can own up to it like a man. It was very close, but yeah. yes, Chris managed the the, the epic comeback. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm in five leagues, and I don't know who on Sundays to root for anymore. <laughs> Because I had Matthew Stafford as one of mine. And then I was going up against Colleen Wolf, who had Matthew Stafford in one of our leagues. So it was like, oh, man, do I want Matthew Stafford to suck right now or do I want him to succeed? I'm not quite sure how I feel right now. But he sucked. He was absolutely dreadful. Um, and the scarier part is that was reading his, his plays or his hand signals or something – in, in terms of the offense, so Matt Patricia's got to go to the drawing board this week, that's for sure. Yeah, it was uh, Matt Patricia's debut as a head coach, and uh, it definitely Ugh. got some work to do there, uh, getting manhandled oh, yeah. like that by, by the Jets. So everyone's going to give oh. credit to Sam Darnold, but really it was every other aspect of the Jets game, which was surprising. <laughs> uh, what was, in your opinion, the, the biggest surprise and the biggest takeaway from week one? Oh, man. Um, the biggest surprise was Fitzpatrick being Fitzmagic again. <laughs> right? Uh, that magical beard from Harvard was, was so promising. Um, you almost think, like, would Jameis Winston, when he comes back, are you going to think about putting Fitzpatrick in? Or are you going to, you know, are you going to go with Jameis Winston um, leading the way? So I don't know. You know, I guess we'll see. I think they play, gosh, who do, who do the Bucks play? Oh, the Eagles. Don't they play the Eagles? Uh, let me check. I can get that schedule for you here because I'm not sure I was going over everything that happened in week one. I didn't even have a chance to look towards the future yet. But before we discover who it is that they're playing, I will say this, and that is that we've we've seen this story play out before. Fitzpatrick has yes. a magical game, and we all go, why isn't he a franchise quarterback somewhere? And then the next game, we're like, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, oh, brought back down to reality you know the other really interesting storyline that i'm excited to watch because yes i am on the hard knocks train Ooh. Brown, and i am rooting for the browns this season and with tarod taylor um but i thought i was really pleased to see how they stuck with it defensively um that unit is going to be really really good uh and you know i just i'm excited to see the energy injected into the offense with todd haley and tarod taylor because you have now have a quarterback who I think he only had four interceptions last year. Um, and now you have a QB who does not turn the ball over. That's going to do wonders for that Browns offense. They brought to the table with the Steelers on the defensive side of the ball. To me, I think the Browns have an eight season. Yeah, for me, I had to really uh, ask myself which was more shocking to me, the fact that the Browns didn't lose <laughs> or that they scored 21 points uh, against the Pittsburgh right. Steelers. But only the Browns could start out week one uh, of course, ending their losing streak without a, a victory. I mean, the, it, there's not a more Browns thing that could happen in the NFL than that. So uh, I say en I enjoy it. It'll never happen again, <laughs> ever. I know, right? <laughs> they end their losing 17-game losing streak, but with a tie. Not with a win, but with a tie. But you know what? It was against the Steelers. 
Uh, the Steelers did not have Le'Veon Bell. I think Big Ben's a little banged up. But it was a good coming out of the contest and seeing what they did in the preseason. I think the Browns have a really promising season, which is exciting. We finally can kind of root for the Browns, you know? Yeah, that'll be different. I don't know if I'll find myself rooting for them just yet, but uh, I mean, it's kind of a similar story with with the Bears. They have a lot of promise, and then Aaron Rodgers is just like, "Oh, hold my beer," right? <laughs> Goes out there and does Aaron Rodgers things. <laughs> um, and I don't know if we should bring this up because I know how big of a Niners fan you are, but did you see the Niner game? Oh, unfortunately, yeah. yeah start to finish. I don't mean to remind you and all, but. You, know, you kind of wonder with, like, the games, like, the Niners with the Vikings or even with the Giants and the Jags, are these anomaly games? Like, are the Giants going to be actually good this season or were they just, you know, horrible with that O-line because of the Jags' defense? You know what I mean? Like, are, yeah. are, the, are the Giants actually pretty good? Um, and you just saw kind of a poor performance because they played the Jags' defense. Are the Niners going to be good? Because you saw DeForest Buckner put up great numbers on the defensive side of the ball, and I think that defensive unit is sort of underrated. But are they better than what we saw when they played the Vikings? Because let's all remind each other, the Vikings' defense unit, breaking news, is really freaking good. It is. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not a loss that you hang your head about. I mean, obviously, you no. want to come out and win week one. But I did say that right. I, I thought that, you know, I picked them 11-5. and five. I said this was going to be one of those five games that they lose. And and when I think sure. about it, it's like, okay, so Alfred Morris fumbles on the one after like an 11-minute oh. drive. That broke my heart. Yeah. George Kittle, <laughs> wide open down the field, just misses. the Like, he drops the ball. It, it touched his hands. Like, it went right through his hands. And that one hurt. Uh, a couple of Jimmy G interceptions. So, you yeah. know, in my mind, I'm thinking, Three. okay, it's week one. Uh, this is stuff that's just going to happen. They'll bounce back next week because they finished the season so strong last year against not one, but two playoff teams and the Titans and my God, the Jaguars that I have to I talk this up as like an anomaly, you know, as a fan and as somebody that watched this team so closely last year, I'm just like, it was a freak occurrence. Those mistakes won't happen again, but that opens the door for different mistakes to happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and and when you're going up against a team like the Vikings, who were so dominant last season, you don't want to make those mistakes because you're, you, you, you're right. You hang your hat. You go, oh, man, we beat ourselves. We weren't really prime for the opportunity. But, it just, I, you know, I do that new NFL pick em show on Friday. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm a Niner fan. I'm through and through big Niner fan. And to me... It was that was going to be an L. That first opening season, I don't care where the game was, they were taking an L. And like you mentioned, yeah, I mean, next week we'll see, or this upcoming week we'll see how they rebound. And that's what's interesting is how are these teams, these storylines, if you will. You know, um, I have a friend that's a huge Giants fan, and they talk about how porous the O-line looked, and they had five new starters on the offensive line. Are, are they going to band together and figure it out? You know, uh, I we were split. TD and Dan Howley on the show said that the Giants were going to win. Me and Cynthia Freeland said that the Jags were going to win. The Jags ultimately won. Now, is it going to just take some time for all those shiny new pieces to come together and gel, if you will? That will be the storyline to watch, I think, for the next few weeks. Because I think the Giants are on the road. They play uh, the Cowboys in Dallas. Obviously, the Cowboys' defense is not the Pro Bowl stature of the Jaguars' defense. What are we going to see from the Giants offensively? So, you know, it's, it's interesting because the storylines can't be painted just in week one. We'll figure – we'll have to see how they these certain teams rebound, you know? Yeah, and I completely agree. There's a lot of opportunity to rebound. As a Niners fan, I couldn't be happier that week two, uh, the game is not only at home but against the Lions, who I don't know how, how oh quickly of a gosh. turnaround – they can have, but I know they had a lot more problems on their end of the, the things than, than 49ers did against a team like uh, the Minnesota Vikings. But you were correct sure. in the Eagles uh, visiting the Buccaneers. So I, I think Fitzmagic probably runs out against a stout defense like that. Um, but Vikings yeah. against Green Bay in Green Bay, I, I guess – as an analyst, as somebody who watches this game so closely, does anything that Aaron Rodgers did uh, Sunday night surprise you at all? You know, I'm. I feel so sad that I just. I'm still surprised that Aaron Rodgers can do things of of superhuman power. Like, yes, I saw <laughs> what he did, and I'm like, holy crap! 
How does he do it? How does he do it? And that's why you have to say Aaron Rodgers is really, I mean, the guy on a, like a pig leg, he had one leg. He went out in the half, he came back and he throws a dime to what was it? Geronimo? Was that yep. who the guy that got, <laughs> it's insane. Only Aaron Rodgers can make plays like that. And that's what makes Aaron Rodgers MVP. Uh, you know, I don't know, year in, year out, or it's certainly an MVP candidate. Um, and that's what's crazy is that team is so built around Aaron Rodgers doing Aaron Rodgers-like things. That's the scariest thing. And and did you not see what Khalil Mack – Khalil Mack was an absolute monster yep. um, showing – Every single person, specifically John Gruden, why you do pay that man, <laughs> right? Like, how did John Gruden uh, feel about that game after he saw it? I'm sure he was licking his wounds um, and so defensively said, oh, well, he didn't want to be here. But it's interesting, you know? I mean, you got to wonder how these coaches take these. It's hard to put teams together and, um, you know, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I look at the NFC North. I'm, I, 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 I'm kind of thinking that they might be the most powerful uh, division right now in the NFL. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. Now, uh, week two, we get Monday night matchup between Seattle and Chicago, and it seemed like the magic has sort of run out uh, in Seattle with the Seahawks. And then, of course, the Bears found all kinds of ways to lose that game. Sunday night. I know. So both are going to very much want a win, but I guess who can like finish a game will actually determine who wins that game. I went uh, ten and or eleven and five for my week mm-hmm. one picks, or maybe it was ten and six. Mm. But a lot of those uh, were the surprises of the week. So as far as the surprises we have, let's get your thoughts on what the future holds for these teams. Was it fluke? Or is there a a long and dreadful 2018 campaign for these teams? First, let's throw an easy one out there. The Saints losing to the Buccaneers 48-40. I I mean, that score obviously should be flipped, but uh, we're talking Drew Brees and the playoff Saints from last year. How does that happen in the Dome? (laughs) I know, right? And, 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 And the team that Drew Brees puts up so many numbers, I mean, that Bucks uh, secondary is awful. But here, I think it's a fluke, and I'll tell you why. They could not control the tempo of the game. You could tell the Saints on both sides of the ball were sort of tired, and that's where Mark Ingram is such an integral part of the offense because he's really keeping the flow of the game. You can, you know, run it up the gut with Mark Ingram and get get some get your defense, uh, eat up some clock, get your defense uh, refreshed. And I, I think that was really the element of uh, the Saints unit, in my opinion, that was really missed uh, was was what Mark Ingram can do and make that offense very dynamic. So you don't have to to really rely so much on Drew Brees. And that's what you saw successfully done last season. Um, so maybe we'll see some issues this first four weeks without Mark Ingram. Um, but after that, I think that they should hopefully, I hope, uh, get back to normal Saints football. Yeah, I, I would have to agree on that. I think that, uh, you know, what, whatever Fitz Magic had in the tank, he spent it all uh, down in the Big <laughs> yeah. Easy, you know, in New Orleans. Yeah. So uh, he's going to yeah. have a, a rough a rough day against uh, Philly, and, and I'm going to call that right now. Uh, the other one, yep. um, Cincinnati and Indianapolis. Now, I don't know if I gave too much credit to a returning Andrew Luck or not enough credit to Andy Dalton. I don't know if that even is yeah. such a thing, but uh, your your takeaways from that matchup and what we can expect from those two going forward. First off, I think Andrew Luck is back. Uh, it seemed as though some of the plays that I was watching, and mind you, I was at a yard house watching <laughs> in Florida, um, but I did tell my husband I thought Andrew Luck looked like he was in midseason form. I mean, uh, you know, he – he seemed to have his 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 magic back. Um, the one problem with the Colts, though, is their defense is always up in the air. Um, they don't have the great run game, and those that's the problem. A- Andrew Luck is going to have to put up so many points on the board for Colts to see W's week in and week out. And I just don't think that they really have the firepower to do that. Um, as far as the Bengals are concerned. How dynamic is that offense with A.J. Green, uh, Joe Mixon, uh, Andy Dalton? And then you've got these the defense. I think it's going to be a really fun, really well-balanced team to watch moving forward. So I'm going to say their trajectory is up, 
I'm going to say the Colts is is not <laughs> going the other direction. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, I think it, it takes obviously more than Andrew Luck to to turn that team around. They've got some, I, I think, greener pastures on the other side there, but not not quite yet no. uh, the last one uh, of course last night's matchup the Jets and, and Detroit like how bad is it in Detroit or was this one of those fluke games because uh, in all honesty I mean uh, the Jets didn't seem like they were going to be really all that better than they were last year and then Detroit with Matt Patricia after their strong campaign last year it seemed like they might pick up where they left off and they clearly did not and that's what's always so interesting when you watch these games is do you go are the Jets that good or are the Lions that bad, right? Um, and, yes, I think Matt Patricia has a lot of work to do. To me, you know, obviously he's a defensive guy, and you saw Matthew Stafford just get crunched time and time again without anyone really protecting him on the offensive line. So that's what my question is. is the Jet, Are the Jets' defense – as good as we thought, or does Matthew Stafford have a really crummy offensive line, and are they going to be able to fix it or figure it out moving forward? The thing that concerns me the most is how did the Jets defenders know the plays that the Lions were going to run? Um, that should not be happening from a veteran Matthew Stafford. So, I, you know, I haven't really done a whole lot of homework in terms of that particular subject, um, but that's really concerning to me. The bright spot is my Sam Darnold. I am a USC Trojan through and through, (laughs) and I really liked what he injected into that offense. You know, he was airing it out. He seemed he seemed to really shake it off after uh, that horrible first pick six. And then I saw someone on the sideline tell him, I think it was Josh McCown. Hey, guess what? Brett Favre did the same thing. And you know what? Brett Favre, you're in pretty good company. Brett Favre's pretty good. He's a pretty good quarterback. <laughs> um, you know, Hall of Famer. So, look, I don't know what it means for the Jets moving forward. I think that you can be really excited if you're a Jets fan based on what you saw last night. Um, not so much for the Lions, and I know that this isn't rocket science, of course, if you saw the Lions game, what could you possibly be excited about? The, the huge issues were on the offensive side of the ball. They hired Matt Patricia. He's a defensive-minded coach. I don't know. I'm a little – I literally, I took out some of my Lions players, Matthew Stafford, and I swapped him. I put in Tyrod Taylor or other quarter, – even Blake Bortles to me is a more opportunistic quarterback uh, than what Matthew Stafford put on paper last night. So – yeah, I, I like to, to make the joke that uh, Sam Darnold uh, made up for 14 of the Jets' 48 points, but also seven of Detroit's 17 points. So, I mean, who, yeah. was, who was he really the MVP for last night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Good point. Uh, yeah. if, since I know that you guys love to cover these stories, uh, if you are Des Bryant or Le'Veon Bell, who do you feel? Mm. Who do you think is is feeling better? You know, Tuesday night uh, after after Week One. You're not feeling good if you're Le'Veon Bell. Did you not see what James Conner did? James Conner had just as many, if not uh, receiving yards, and that's why Le'Veon Bell is such a dynamic uh, running back. He's he can get you through the air and on the ground. And James Conner was uh, pretty good when targeted by um, Ben Ben Roethlisberger. So I don't know. I mean, look, uh, and 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 I I brought up this example on the show in 2016. D'Angelo Williams filled in swimmingly for Le'Veon Bell, and of course, D'Angelo Williams is not the same type of running back Le'Veon Bell is. But there's a lot of guys in the Steelers uh, locker room, Marquise Pouncey, to name just one example, who really like James Conner. So I would rather be Des Bryant, who saw the Cowboys lose. Uh, to the Panthers week one. And I don't really feel like they found a solid replacement. I mean, Cole Beasley, I guess. Um, They like Michael Gallup, I think. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Why is Des Bryant not signed? I still can't figure that one out. Um, I don't know who he wants to go to. We've we've heard rumors, maybe the Patriots. (laughs) I say go to the Browns. Um, The Patriots signed Corey Coleman today. So I have... He turned down the multi-year deal from the Ravens. Like, what is going on with Des Bryant? And yet he's so he's so um, vocal on Twitter. I can't figure it out. I don't know. 
I'm well, not sure. Well, in your experience, then let's try to clear that up here real quick. I, I mean, if okay. you're if you're Des Bryant and you have confidence that your team is going to look pitiful, uh, whether it is an offensive thing or or not, and they happen to lose in week one, do you feel sure. that that makes your stock go up as a free agent watching your team lose? And especially if people pinpoint or, or point out the offense struggles. Right. I mean, is is that enough? Absolutely. I think it is. I mean, um, he's when Des was on the field, you know, you would see he had more chemistry uh, with Tony Romo. And you don't really know, was it just Dak getting his feet wet? Was he uh, sort of figuring out the offense and had his own favorite targets? But when Des is on the field and you have Ezekiel Elliott healthy or, you know, on the field or, or, or whatever, that to me that you have to play a better defense you you know you have to prepare to stop either the pass or the run and I just don't know if the Cowboys have the threats on the outside or the deep threat that Des Bryant once brought to that team and I'm not saying that they don't I just don't I haven't seen it yet and of course I'm not covering that team each and every day um but yeah you got to feel pretty good that Des Bryant is not on that team and the first season opener uh, they took home an L, and you know I don't really see them producing as much offensively as they had when Des was on the field. I mean, he was a playmaker. That was a guy you had to cover. Um, he stretched the field, and to me, I would feel great if I was Des Bryant, knowing that the team that kind of let me go got an L. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> God, could you imagine if he ended up on a team like Green Bay? I don't know if they have the need there but you'd get you know a, a replace jordy nelson for like a what a fourth of the cost a half half of the cost there uh, well right it's that's something yeah. uh, the irony uh, that would be fantastic but if jason garrett I isn't know. on the hot seat after week one then i'm convinced he's either gonna have to retire or die before there's a new head coach in <laughs> talents i know he is in with the cowboys uh front office clearly you know and he's a good coach um Mark Iztook is a dear friend of mine and a huge Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. And each and every week, you know, I would hear him say he's just frustrated maybe with the play calling um, or things that he wished Jason get. But, you know, we're not in their shoes. I would love to pretend that I could, you know, be a coach of an NFL football team. But I'm sure it's clearly challenging. Um and with that being said, you know, Jason Garrett has his own challenges. He has he has a banged up offensive line. Travis Travis Frederick, we have no idea when he's coming back. Zach Martin's banged up. You know, you've got new pieces, which that offensive line used to be the best in the league. So you've got that issue. You have to replace a, a future Hall of Fame tight end, a Des Bryant. It's just, to me, there's... And then, you know, the defense has always been kind of a question mark, although I, the defense impressed me in the preseason so I was excited to see uh what the Cowboys brought I mean the Arizona game they had what eight takeaways I get it it's a preseason game but it gave me something sort of excited um or something to look forward to with the Cowboys but uh yeah I you know Jason Garrett good luck buddy it's not gonna be <laughs> easy this season no it's definitely not I'm gonna see if I can get Mark on next week or the the week after but you and I we square off in fantasy week three so you have a week to get in the win column before I take you down after that so <laughs> um best of luck uh nice. you know rebounding from your week one three-point loss that was probably the closest contest of oh. the week in that league and it was a nail biter <laughs> took the Monday night double header to get the job done for Chris so I think I think yep. you're gonna be just fine but Aaron um a pleasure as always are you guys are you and Mark doing NFL Blitz again like what's your what's your story for this season with NFL Network we are doing unfortunately I don't have Marcus took as my TV husband I'm very Aww, sad about it but um He's doing a lot of awesome stuff. He's doing game day live on Sundays, and I think he's doing NFL fantasy um, sometimes throughout the week, which, you know, when Iztook is on the, the, the anything, camera, <laughs> online, he's so fun to watch, and he's in, incredibly self-deprecating, and that's what we love about him. I'm doing a new show 
that actually debuted last Friday, and it's called NFL Game Day Pick'em. So I'm with Dan Helley, Terrell Davis, and our analytics expert, Cynthia Freeland, who is, like, insanely smart. And by the way, you should have her on. She will wow you with her stats and knowledge and just expertise of the game. Um, And she's also in one of my fantasy leagues and kills it every year, which is very upsetting. Um, but it's a Friday show, and it's called NFL Game Day Pick'em. So we, we go around the horn, and we pick NFL games, um, and we talk about how, you know, uh, they're favorited. So it's pretty cool. It's an innovative show, uh, first of its kind on the network. And, you know, we've gotten some really great feedback, and it seems like the fans really like it. So that's exciting. Yeah, I actually think I have Cynthia booked for next Thursday, so her and I can go heads up for uh, for my weekly pick 'em here, and we'll see nice. just, just how good she she really is. But I'm very happy for you guys. Yes. Sorry that you and Is took our our uh, not uh, TV husband and wife anymore. But as I mentioned, <laughs> though, when uh, when we make our trip down to LA, hopefully this season we are gonna hit you guys up and hopefully hang out and have yes. a, a blasty blast. It'll be a good time. I would love that. Yes. But thank you so much. I asked you for 20. You gave me 25, but I will let you get back to enjoying your time on the East Coast. So thank you as always. A pleasure and a privilege. Aaron, you have a great rest of your night. Thank you for having me on. And you're going down week three, just so you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let the trash talk begin now, a whole week yep. in advance. All right, Aaron, you take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. And once again, that was Erin Coscarelli of NFL Network. You can catch her Fridays with Cynthia Freeland, who will be on next Thursday night for their Pick'em show on NFL Network. And yes, Marcus took, uh, we're going to try to get him on uh, next week or the week after, Cowboys fan. And uh, uh, I don't know how, how you feel after this week if you know that Dez is sitting there on a comfy couch or recliner somewhere tweeting away while your Cowboys are struggling. Um didn't need to come to that, but it did. I told Mark that he needed to put down the mic and throw on the headset and get out there and go be the hero that the Cowboys Nation deserves and be the new head coach of Dallas. But I, I tell you, you can be the hero for yourself as far as looking your best. Go to Indy's Barbershop if you're in the Spokane or Pacific Northwest area. Even if you're just outside of town, it is worth the trip. They're on 711 North Monroe Street. Quality haircuts and hot towel shaves. I go there at least once, if not twice a month, so that I make sure I'm looking my best. And the atmosphere is great, really laid back. There's a pool table. There's free beer. They're going to make sure that you've got change for the meter. I mean, it's just everything that you would expect from a barbershop, that barbershop feel, smell, environment. So you got Jason and Dylan. They are some of the best barbers ever. And I didn't know exactly what the barbershop experience was until I went to Indies. And I'll probably never go to another barbershop as long as I'm in the area. And even then, wherever I live, I might, you know, try to make excuses to fly back just to visit them. So go and hit up Indies Barbershop if you're in the Spokane or Pacific Northwest area. Say, hey, I heard about you on the fan show. They're going to give you 15% off of your uh, service there, whether it be a quality haircut, hot towel shave, or both. So you don't want to miss out on that. And I do want to thank all of you for tuning in on this Tuesday evening. I know it was a later broadcast than had been advertised, but there was some stuff that came up today. Obviously, Aaron's availability, some stuff with the fam bam and the in-laws. So, you know, it's it's what happens. It's the end of summer officially now. The fair is in town, and we wanted to go and enjoy that a little bit. But don't forget, follow the fan show on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and then the fanshow.com is your home base for all things football and nonsense. Subscribe to the podcast if you can't listen live. That's iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and, of course, Spotify. Leave a review on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing and make sure that people can find the show easier. There's a YouTube channel as well for audio and video content. And we have a BattleBots episode tomorrow night guest to be announced. Thursday, Kevin Goatee, comedian of Comedians Watching Comedians. We're going to do our first of the of this year's uh, fan versus fan show weekly pick them we'll put five games out there and we'll pick winners and losers and see who comes out on top tomorrow though we have uh, the return of chris jericho's or i should say the fan shows the list you just made the list as well as every
everyone's favorite award, the prestigious and coveted Butt Fumble Award. So don't forget to tune in tomorrow night back at its regularly scheduled time and place. Uh, Spreaker.com slash user slash the fan show or the fan show.com under the listen live tab. And that is every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks! Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his own player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.